to improving reading and writing skills with field trips and building factual knowledge. But first, before I get into that activity, I want to go through a factual knowledge experiment that was done, and then I'm going to give you an example. So they did the study with junior high students, and half of the kids in the study were good readers and half were poor readers. And in those you know, scores, uh, the 50% good readers and 50% poor re readers is according to the standardized test scores. And each group, half know a lot about baseball and half only know a little bit about baseball. And then they read a story about a baseball game. And periodically, they needed to stop reading and show what had happened in the story by moving the pieces of, on the baseball diamond, showing their understanding, their comprehension of the story. So who do you think understood the story? The kids the prior reading test said were good readers or the kids who knew a lot about baseball? They knew a lot about baseball. They knew a lot about baseball. Yep. The good I, readers I who didn't know baseball, baseball only got 19 out of 40 correct. Only got 48%. <laughs> Four readers who knew baseball got 28 items out of 40 correct. So they got 70% because of their background knowledge. So that being said, who are good readers? Good readers are those who know a bit about everything so they will have some background knowledge that they can apply to whatever comes up in a reading text. And so that's why it's important to be building vocabulary and building background knowledge. Research has established that students' background knowledge plays a critical role in their understanding of the higher level concepts contained in most content area materials. So once students learn decoding, sounding out words, uh, which we do with the spelling program and the five minutes to better reading it, that you guys practice, uh, you can decode anything. But in order to understand what you read, you must be able to read fluently and have prior knowledge to attain meaning, attach meaning to what you are reading. So the five minutes to better reading skills is, is working on the fluency uh, we've already worked on sounding out the words, encoding and decoding with the spelling, uh, but you have to have prior knowledge also. And so that's why we need to be doing a lot of vocabulary work as well as building that um, background knowledge. Now, when you don't have good auditory memory skills or visual memory skills, it's a little bit difficult to be you know, building that background knowledge. I have tested a, a ton of students over the years, and um, every single student that had poor factual knowledge also had poor visual memory and or poor auditory memory or both, and, you know, both being depressed. And so it's not that we don't give a lot of experiences, but our kids are not remembering it. So things to do to help remember is this next activity. You can go on a field trip and take pictures or draw pictures from where you went, and then you can import the pictures to a Word document. You can dictate, write, or type a few sentences to go with them, and then you can use that to make a family scrapbook and or additional reading material for your kids. So we're going to kind of show you how you do that. So I just need to get my um, Word document up. So on Friday, we went to um, to Reno, and they have this wonderful auto museum there. And so I took all kinds of pictures, and this is it bigger. This is the DeLorean. It is gold-plated with um, thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars of gold in it. When they purchased this, it was worth $88,000. Now, because the price of gold has gone up so much, it's worth a heck of a lot more than that. This was the first car that we saw when we got there. Then we saw older vehicles, and, and here's a row of older vehicles. And they even have it made up like an old-fashioned um, street in a town. 
And so what I did is I just, you know, put them all in a, I, I uploaded them from my phone and put them in a folder. And then I typed the sentence and then I, I just went to add to insert a text box and I'm going to go ahead and insert another one and I'm going to move it down. And then I typed a um, little sentence about it. Now I can there, make that a little bit bigger. If I want it to look nicer, I can actually select my outside box then and go over to the format tab and um, go to shape outline and put, you know, black it out, blank it out so that there's nothing there. So it looks a little bit better. So now I have older cars and I might say older cars we saw or we saw older cars. That sounds better. So I have to capitalize a sentence. And then I'm going to go ahead and import the picture. So I'm going to do insert. And we have these cars here. And I think I want that to look a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make my box a little bit bigger. And then I can expand my picture. And then we saw this really cool car, so I'm going to go ahead and put that here. It's also building that critical factual knowledge base because you're going over it and over it and over it. You're not just doing it once and putting it on a shelf. You do it and then you review it and you review it and you review it. And that is what will help build that factual knowledge base. Going to a baseball game or playing a baseball game once is not going to help you um, to be able to answer a ton of questions about a baseball game. You have to go more than once and so or review it more than once. The same thing with with, um, you know, volleyball, you know, um, what and what is the difference between um, beach volleyball and indoor volleyball competition? And, you know, it's seeing something once it's going to help, but it's not going to help you to really retain those differences unless you go over it numerous times. Remember, commercials, we see commercials seven to nine times before we act on them. And so kids need to be reviewing these things numerous times for it to sink in and then they'll have it. Does that make sense? Yes. And so yeah. then, then they, what was that? Would you then maybe print all these out and put them like in a, a, a binder? You got like it. A field trip binder or yep, yep. graph book? Yeah. Right, right. And so I would do, and we used to do that all the time, you know, in a scrapbook binder. And, and in fact, my mother used to do that. And one of the greatest th activities when I would take my kids to go to visit her, she had like 50 photo albums and scrapbooks. And we would just all say, I mean, this, well, we're going through the albums, aren't we? You know, and going over and over and we'd read the stuff and we'd look at the pictures. And it helps you to remember, you know, what you did. And it's really family building, you know, and it's a fun thing to do. My kids still love it. Um, it's it's really builds that community. These kinds of things it's, are really important to help you remember. Like I say, we take our kids wonderful places. It might even just be the grocery store, and you take different pictures of aisles at the grocery store. And which was your favorite aisle? Oh, I hate when we have to go and look at all the cleansers and the toilet paper. I like when we get to look in the candy aisle or at the sodas or at the fruit. Um, my favorite thing to pick out at the grocery store is. So you can do the same kind of thing. It doesn't have to be a big major trip. 
but you're going to be using this and this can then become additional reading material for your kids. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's helpful. Um, and, and then, like I say, for, for older students, you know, doing this kind of thing is going to help you remember, yeah, we went someplace. And it, then when you come upon uh, your reading and they're talking about, especially if it's social studies or science, you're going to have something to relate it to. Yeah, I remember going to some museum and, and we saw something. In fact, we went to a museum several years ago that was a tool museum and it had all these old fashioned tools. And it's like, that was really cool to see. And again, I took pictures, and, and so we, I have something to remember it by. And it's it really helps, you know, some of the strange uh, tools that they had and, and understanding what they're used for. And even following along, you know, a whole um, time period of the tool started out like this and it got more refined and more refined and more refined. You know, these kinds of things you'll end up using in your writing. And so it's a real important thing, building the factual knowledge. So we do that by building the vocabulary, which is what we've been working on. Any other questions? Bonnie, I had a question about putting together um, some sort of a scrapbook, like you said, you know, after visiting places. Uh -huh. is um, you know, I, I'm, I, I have a question about the format that we can use um, in terms of either, you know, doing this in like a digitally with the pictures and then typing everything, you know, have the kids um, type the stories to go with it um, on the computer, or w would it be a better practice, you know, would, would um, if they actually draw pictures and then write, you know, physically, would that help? One, one of the things that you want to be doing is when they, I would do a combination of things. I would have them draw, and you can also just put the pictures on on the sheet like I have here, and they physically do the writing. Remember, when you physically write, you retain things better than when you type because the sensations on your fingers when you type are all the same. When you physically write, it impresses in your brain differently. And so physically writing it is going to be very helpful. Okay. That's what I wanted to know. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. No problem.